Hello everyone, my name is Gabriel Arore and I'm a student in Divine World University undertaking the Papua New Guinea and International Studies course. So the first time I came across the Save Pacific campaign was during one of our tutorial classes under the unit PG135 Environmental Sustainability. So during our tutorial class we were given five videos to watch and then do an analysis on the videos which the whole lot of videos were based on environmental issues. So one of the videos was about the Save the CP campaign, which was um, going against the proposed Frida River gold and copper mine. So that was the first time that I came across the Save the CP campaign and I learned about uh, such activists like Ma Manu Penny. The Save the CP campaign um, is a non-governmental organization campaign. It is going against the mining giant, which is uh, Penos, or the Frida River gold, gold and copper mine that is proposed to um, okay and we learned that it will cause a lot of uh, environmental destruction due to its um, operation. So that's what I've learned and it will affect a lot of lives along the Sipic River because as we all know the people along the Sipic River have been surviving through the Sipic River. They get their fish, they get their food and they use the Sipic River for their daily livelihoods. My knowledge about previous mines and how they affected the livelihoods of our people in Papua New Guinea is that a lot of mines before they are established in Papua New Guinea, they give this idea, so they give high hopes to our people, telling them that um, this mining, when it is carried out, the operations are in progress, or when they are in operation, they will give a lot of um, economic benefits to our people and less environmental destruction. That's what they all say, that they will provide economic benefits and less without any cost or harm to the environment. However, as we have learned through um, the Bougainville and in Pogera, we've learned a lot that the mining scheme, but the things that they've proposed were the total opposite of what what um, had actually been proposed. So they came in and after they've left or after the mining was in operation, we've learned that there was less economic progress and there was a lot of environmental and social destruction in the areas that were mined. My take -home message, my take -home message to the people of Papua New Guinea and the government of the day is to look carefully into what is happening right now, especially in the mining industry because we all know that the people, over 95% of the people who are in charge of these mining companies are expatriates and are people overseas and they do not understand how we live in our society here in the Papua New Guinean context. So they do not how we survive, they do not know how we survive on our land, they do not know how the rivers and our trees are very important to us. We should educate more of our Papua New Guinean people who have lived with us for how many years and who have a close connection to the environment. So my message is for us to build our human development, our own Papua New Guineans who will later come back and who will be sitting in those rooms to negotiate during the mining agreements or the signing during the deals, then arrangements for uh, mining proposals 